now we are proceeding to the modernist period okay uh, in the last class we discussed uh, the period before that which was the edwardian period and today we are going to start with the modernist period uh, and after that we will be left with uh, the contemporary and post colonial that will be in the next class okay so the modern period ranges between 1910 to 1939 and you might notice that this is the time period which also involves uh, first world war right which started in 1914 and ended in 1918 and wars very often have very strong impact on uh, literature okay now the first slide over here uh, i have already shared with you okay i'll just quickly go over it and then we will move on to the characteristics of the modernist period so uh, this is what i already explained to you but then there were some characteristics in addition to these ones in general which i want to share with you and then uh, we will discuss the best of the uh, features of the modernist period as well so uh, in mention of all war technology and the telephone and automobile of course is what is the hallmark of this particular you know time period and that of course affected the way the literature was being written so if you look at the literature of this time you will find lot of war literature as well also there is lot of communication you know across the globe there is the there is the speed of light life which has certain suddenly increased due to the invention of automobile and all that has affected literature one way or the other i will tell you how all that has affected literature in many ways on the next slide so there were quite a number of you know uh, publishers and the writers who became very active in this time because of the availability of technology i told you about the bloomsbury group in the last class as well genia wolf was one of the important members of this uh, group in fact she was one of the founders of this group uh, this was a group of intellectuals who together uh, you know wrote books and then published those books excuse me sir uh, this yes Sir, there is someone waiting in the lobby. Can you please let them in? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Find where this. all right so feminism uh, i'm sure many of you are aware of this term you have heard this term at least uh, feminism uh, you know is kind of uh, a movement which uh, uh, which argues that uh, women have a unique identity and they have a right to articulate that identity the way they want it Okay, so so that is what feminism stands for. It uh, it began in many parts of the world, but in England, it effectively started uh, uh, in the period uh, which we call the modernist period. And Virginia Woolf was in England. Virginia Woolf was one of the proponents of feminism movement, especially with reference to literature. so she started writing kind of literature which was famous for a very strong element of feminism an example of that would be uh, the famous novel mrs dalloway now in that particular novel mrs dalloway virginia wolf uh, written by virginia wolf of course Uh, she uh, introduces characters uh, who are of course women 
but they are very strong characters and they are strong not just in the sense of being you know uh, individual in their own ways but in addition to that they were the kind of characters who uh, very strongly resisted the social norms Uh, not just in the sense that they wanted to live their life their own way that was happening well before virginia woolf in fact those were the women characters who wanted to think in their own way and they wanted to write in their own way and that was that was very very important in the uh, in, the, in in the world of Uh, you know intellectuals in england because writers in the past had never experimented the writing that way they never thought that language could have gender right they never thought that writing could be unique when it comes to uh, writing by a particular gender right writing was considered to be something neutral so anybody could use it man or woman virginia woolf on the other hand had a different approach and she argued that just like everything else women have their unique writing expression and each woman has its own unique writing expression therefore uh, she believed that she could experiment with with a new kind of writing and that she did in her novel Uh, Mrs. Dalloway. She wrote other novels as well, and all of them are a demonstration of her uh, belief in the uh, you know uniqueness of uh, women, you know, uh, as far as the expression is concerned. So, so that kind of feminism, which is in literature, that is what she introduced. Now. the harlem renaissance as i told you in the last class this is a this is an american phenomenon basically uh, uh, there was you know lot of civil rights struggle uh, in america uh, in those days uh, you know around 1900 and immediately after 1900 uh, so one of the uh, uh, manifestations of that struggle was the uh, uh, the uh, movement and the uh, you know political movement by the black people so in america therefore the black people uh, kind of asserted themselves as as an as as having a unique identity in the united states right now these two points you know the point of feminism and the point of uh, negro uh, as a powerful identity these two points are very close to each Other, right apparently they seem to be uh, disconnected one is the phenomenon in england the other is a phenomenon in the us one is about the women and the other is about new negro but actually these points are very close and interconnected they are close and interconnected because both of these phenomenon which is feminism and uh, negro identity or black identity both of them aim to empower the marginalized groups in society so women in england and in rest of the world as well uh, they were uh, in almost all walks of life they were pushed to the back benches right and they did not have representation in politics or representation in economics or representation in the uh, you know cul cul culture right so it was all male dominated everywhere similarly if you talk about america there was lot of population black population over there but that black population did not have any proper representation right to the extent that they were not even considered to be full human beings right so both of these phenomenon as i just said they were quite interconnected one taking place Uh, in england the other one taking place in um, in us right 
that of course does not mean that these phenomenon were just restricted to these parts of the world in fact the feminism the way i'm just telling you with reference to virginia wolf it affected lot many writers in america as well similarly the uh, 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 the rights of the black people and the emergence of the black identity in the us that influenced the black people in england as well right so this was a kind of you know broader phenomenon anyways moving on to some of the characteristics of uh, modern period in literature so the first characteristic which is very common is break with the tradition so before 1910 there was a tendency in uh, british literature and uh, and in general in british culture to appreciate the uh, value of tradition in all walks of life in politics in literature in culture in music you name anything the britain were proud of the traditions which they held and they practiced those traditions very ritualistically but the modern period especially is recognized because of the deliberate attempt by general people as well as by the intellectuals to uh, reject the traditions and rather embrace newness and that newness was visible in literature as well in the kind of stories and the kind of novels which were being written we could see it over there for example in in lot of literature which was being written if we talk about novel and fiction the writers started writing in new ways they started experimenting with the language in altogether new way so i will explain that a little more in the next slide right i i just want to give you examples of breaking with the tradition but i'll do that on the next slide the second uh, characteristic of the modernist period was relativism relativism means rejection of absolutism so what is absolutism and what is relativism so absolutism is a belief in the absoluteness of truths when you say that you can use any particular no knowledge or any particular channel to reach the truth and that truth is an absolute truth that is what we call absolutism but contrast with that is what we call relativism that means the truth is relative okay uh, well nobody is relative that is not what i mean by being it's relative i mean i'll i'll give you example and i think that is pretty good pretty explanatory example uh, you, almost all of you are aware of einstein uh, einstein yeah almost all of you are aware of einstein that who, who was a scientist right uh so he introduced the famous theory of relativity okay by relativity he meant that the time as we know it that the time is not absolute okay now he had his own mathematical formulation to establish it right so his view was that time measured on the earth and the time measured on the moon you know will not be the same what does it mean it means the value of the time changes relative to the location where, where it is being measured it is called relativism of time 
or relativity of time all right now let me kind of you know remind you that einstein was a modern scientist you know and he had very strong influence on what we call the modernist period all over the world especially in europe and in, in england uh, in the united states so this claim that time is relative this was a pretty disturbing claim for intellectuals writers and thinkers why was it a disturbing claim because time was considered to be an absolute entity for a very very long time in the history of mankind nobody ever questioned the absoluteness of time but when einstein not only questioned it but theoretically established that time is relative that made people think generally speaking that made people think that absolutes are relative no absolute is ultimate truth some absolutes could be truth just for a small period of short period of time some absolute could be truth just in one part of the world at one location but as you change their location those truths also change now this affected the kind of literature which was being written how did that affected the kind of literature that was being written it affected in such a manner that the literature which was being written before modernism in that literature the writers introduced certain values and they wanted those values to be embraced by the readers so charles dickens for example introduces in lot of his works a child character who is being abused by certain grown ups now he does that in order to Uh, motivate the readers to have a positive attitude towards children okay it is a very simplistic way to you know uh, interpret what charles dickens wanted he wanted the children to be loved by everyone what does that mean that means he was in a way teaching a certain value the value of love why did he teach that because he believed that the value of love is an absolute value it is an absolute truth for all places and for all times right now this is about a writer who was born and who wrote well before modernist time who wrote in 17 18th century right we are talking about 20th century as i just said in 20th century literature we do not find such kind of absolutes so when you read 20th century literature you do not find writers well the major writers preaching values in that way rather you will see that the writers keep questioning all these absolute values including the value of truth Okay. So you will see that in modernist literature, the writers uh, do not uh, preach any morality. They do not preach any ethics. Rather, they question all the moralities and they question all the ethics. Why do they do that? Because they do not believe in the absolute value of any of those moral values. Okay. so this is called relativism and this is the effect of re relativism on the literature which was being written this next characteristic of modern literature is individualism 
so individualism again is a philosophical notion which meant that individual choices are more respectable than any external sets of principles so in the pre modern period in the time before modernism generally people looked up to uh, with with more rigor they looked up to uh, various moral values given by religion or culture or you know by any other higher source some metaphysical source but individualism are good that the best judge of the right values is individual himself or herself so the individual does not need any metaphysical source of wisdom or metaphysical source of values or metaphysical source of moral truths individual does not need that why because individual has consciousness has his or her own thinking process and using that consciousness and thinking process the individual can decide what kind of relationship that individual wants to have what kind of economic matters that individual wants to have what kind of dress code the individual wants to have again what kind of language the individual wants to keep or speak right so all those things all matters of life they are to be determined by the individual's own choice that is what individualism is once again this approach to life had a very strong influence on literature because you then start finding in literature the kind of characters who are highly individualistic so the stories were about now the individuals who make their own choices they suffer because of those choices maybe sometimes they become happy sometimes they become sad sometimes the consequence of making choices is tragic sometimes it is not tragic whatever the case is but the characters in the modern literature were highly individualistic finally alienation so alienation means you know alienation from the society that is a that is a consequence of individualism so when when people become highly individualistic they tend to become too self centered and therefore they do not care for maintaining the relationships in society right and eventually there is a possibility that they withdraw themselves from the mainstream society and they get alienated this is a feeling of depression in fact or anxiety which emerges out of alienation right so of course when there was that much individualism in the united states or in europe or in in the britain the consequence was alienation so the writers of the modernist period they wrote a lot about alienation eugene o'neil who was an american playwright he uh, his special theme was alienation right okay now the modernism uh, some people call the later stage of modernism high modernism but you don't have to call it that way you can still call it modernism right but basically they call it high modernism because the modernist characteristics that i just share with you they reached their highest point in the high modernist era now the high modernist era is between world war 1 and world war 
right? The writers of those times were like Ezra Pound, T.S. Eliot, James Joyce. Now, Ezra Pound wrote poetry, which was highly imagistic poetry. So he basically, uh, this is this is a man, right? The name, you know, seems to say that it might be a woman. So Ezra Pound, uh, who, who was an American poet, basically, he wrote imagistic poetry. So what was the imagistic poetry? Imagistic poetry was the kind of poetry where uh, or it is it is a kind of poetry where writers use minimum words for their verses and those words stands for different images and what are images images are the you know objects who imply something else so for example fog f o g fog could be an image in a poem as I said, it will stand for something else. So fog in a poem can stand for uh, melancholy, right? Melancholy, sadness. Melancholy means internal psychological sadness, right? Which can turn into anxiety and depression as well. So melancholy. So fog, F-O-G, fog, as an image could stand for uh, melancholy, right? So that is one example. So the uh, high modernist literature became highly imagistic. There was a reason for that. And the reason was this, that in modern literature, there was a lot of uh, mistrust, mistrust with the language. So because of the relativism, the writer started claiming that the language that we use to communicate is not a reliable means of communication because we cannot always communicate what we want to communicate. Therefore, writers started using more and more images in their poetry. The other poet uh, who is famous in the uh, modernist period is T.S. Eliot. He wrote that famous poem called The Wasteland. So the wasteland is said to be one of the, uh, you know, supreme examples of modern literature. So basically in the wasteland, uh, T.S. Eliot has experimented with the poetic form, right? And he used very unusual poetic form for poetry. So he writes the wasteland in such a manner that he uses the phrases and lines from the poetry of the past in such a manner that he creates an absolutely new poem, right? Which was a unique experiment in that time. And finally, James Joyce. So James Joyce wrote the novel Ulysses. And he followed what we call stream of consciousness style of writing in that. And that is the point that I wanted, I told you I will elaborate later. So stream of consciousness is a style of writing in which when a writer writes, the writer does not care for the correct syntax. What is the syntax? Syntax is the structure of a sentence. So when the writers write using stream of consciousness technique, they do not rigidly follow the correct sentence structure or the correct syntax. Rather, they just keep on writing whatever comes to their mind without deliberate effort to polish the sentence structure. It is called stream of consciousness. As you can very quickly guess when you write following stream of consciousness the output you know the text that you write the story or the novel that you write it is very hard to understand it for readers why because the writer has not given any particular shape to what the writer wrote as you know thoughts do not come to us in order right the thoughts come to us in complete disorder 
that is what happens in real life so the writers who experimented with stream of consciousness they claimed that because thoughts do not come to us in any particular order therefore the true writers should not try to impose artificial order on the thoughts rather they should just write as it comes to their mind and when they just write as it comes to their mind that will be the true representation of an individual's mind okay so 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 that is an experiment with the writing so when i was on this point break with the tradition i told you that th there is an example of how the writers broke with the tradition so this is one example where you know writers even did not continue to write the same way as the people or the writers before them wrote so that was like breaking with the tradition of writing in an orderly manner right so the writers who were writing in the united states especially in the modernist period uh, you know they uh, some of them were called the lost generation as well they include uh, gertrude stein fitzgall and ernest hemingway why they were called the lost generation in america these writers they were called the lost generation because these writers broke away with the tradition to that extent that they were not able to relate themselves with their predecessors and with their forefathers of course they had seen world war 1 some of them had seen world war 2 as well like hemingway therefore they became so disappointed with the human race right and they became so uh, distrustful of human race that they stopped believing in human goodness at all and they thought that uh, they and the people who belong to their race they had lost themselves somewhere right so therefore the critics call them them the lost generation of writers the lost generation who could not connect itself with any tradition right as much distrustful they became with the goodness in mankind so this is all about the modernist period uh, students if you have any question you can ask uh, otherwise we can end the